Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. This is Barbara serving as your host today, and Brother Pete is your co-host. So glad to have you aboard. Well, our title today is, When is Pentecost? And when is the Feast of Shavuot? And here are a few questions. Um, is there a wheat harvest in the spring? No, there is not. The only wheat harvest in scripture is in the summer. Well, is the pilgrimage feast in the third month mentioned in scripture? There is not. Only by using a corrupt counting method on a man-made solar-only calendar do we find a feast in the third month. Well, is Pentecost one day after the seventh Sabbath? No, 50 days. From the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, if the new moon days were included in the seven-week count, 50 to 30, 53 days would have been, would already been counted. From the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days, just like it says. Well, um, is there any new wine available in the spring? There is none. Grapes are a summer crop. So either Peter's accusers were fools, or there really was the possibility of new wine at Pentecost. Well, is the day of Yah spoke the day that Yah spoke the commandments from Sinai called Feast of Weeks in Scripture? It is not. Notice the word spoke. When Moshe carried the stone tablets down the mountain, our own called that day a feast. So when was the wheat in Scripture ready for harvest? the 29th day of the fourth month. And when did Moses come down from Mount Sinai with the law? The 29th day of the fourth month. Well, when does the seven week and 50 day count end? The 29th day of the fourth month. So we're going to go through some exhibits for you uh, to answer these questions uh, to uh, get proof for the answers that we gave. And these are exhibits A through E. And you can please look up all these uh, scriptures for yourself and all the links will be left below. So the evidence to consider, there are two parts or two counts that must be made before Pentecost can be fully come. In addition to the seven Sabbaths complete, we need to add 50 days, not just add one day for a total of 50 days. Leviticus 23. Okay, Brother Pete, would you read this page? 15 through, verses 15 through 16. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, seventh Sabbath, you shall count 50 days, and you shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. In Leviticus 23, oh, that's the thing. Oh, excuse me, in the, excuse me, Leviticus 23, 15 through 16, in the King James is not as clear as it could be. We would be in trouble if the King James English of this passage were the only evidence for what we're presenting. Providentially, there is plenty of evidence. Some have pointed out that Ad or Od, that Strong's Hebrew 53, 5704 and 5703, does not mean from the morrow after the seventh, but Hebrew 4480 does. Which uh, guess which guess where that word is? Leviticus 23:16. Even unto 57, excuse me, unto the morrow, and then we have it right there, uh, 40, 4480, uh, after the Sabbath, uh, seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Look at what Strong's says about Hebrew 5704. Whence 
of space, even unto or time during, while, until, until. Leviticus 23, 16 is about time, not space. So we've been applying the word in the wrong manner all, all along. The Hebrew actually could be translated while from the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. The Fenton translation is the only translation that seems to be honest with the Hebrew. And the quote, you shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath that you bring the wave sheaf seven Sabbaths. You must, uh, they must be complete. Then after the seventh Sabbath, you shall count 50 days when you shall present a new offering to the ever living. That's Leviticus 23, 15 through 16. Okay. So here are some of the exhibits. Exhibit A, Leviticus 23 is the passage in question. Remember, a Sabbath complete, one week, is a different yardstick in time than a day. There is a seven-week count and a 50-day count. Most readers probably see seven Sabbaths complete for seven weeks and immediately think 49 days. But there are not 49 days in this segment of time. These are scriptural weeks, six work days ending with a Sabbath. New moon days are a third category of day. They do not count against the week. There are at least three new moon days in this seven week count for a total of 52 days. So adding one more day to 52 days does not equal 50. And here is a calendar you can Pause the screen and look at it. So um, go ahead, Brother Pete, and read this one. The most salient, salient, salient point here is that a Sabbath complete is one yardstick to measure time. A day is an entirely different yardstick. If a person is five feet, nine inches tall, two separate, two separate units of measure are used. You don't measure the five feet from my heels and then turn around and measure nine inches from my heels too. You add the inches after the inches after the twelfth inch of the ninth foot uh, of the fifth foot. Excuse me. Pentecost also has two separate units of measure. Seven weeks are counted or completed, and then the fifty days are counted. Is if, if a person is five, five foot nine inches. This count is seven feet, 50 inches, so to speak. <laughs> there is no command in Leviticus 23 to begin the 50th day count at wave sheaf. It says to number 50 days from the f morrow after the seventh Sabbath complete. Okay, and you shall count the on to you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow. After the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yah. Leviticus 23, 15 through 16. So um, these weeks, number one, these are weeks as reckoned on Yah's calendar, not a Gregorian Roman Catholic calendar. Yah's weeks do not count new moon days. So two, if you read the context of the passage, the 50 days are numbered from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, not from wave sheaf. So consider the following calendar. And here on the on the right, you'll see Yah's calendar, and you'll see man-made calendar uh, for this year. We're in 2023 with uh, Pentecost on a Gregorian Sunday. So um, this is the sample of Yah's calendar uh, up here at the top. Wave sheep would be the 16th, and you agree that the 15th was the first day, the Sabbath day, the first day of unleavened bread. The 14th, there was Passover. So the wave sheep is the 16th of morrow after the Sabbath. 
And so we have Sabbath complete. Here's our first week. This is our first Sabbath in the brown here. The first week, the second week. Over here in the second month, we have the third week, the fourth week, the fifth, the sixth. And then the Sabbath completed from the seventh week. This would be the morrow after here. And so um, the Feast of Weeks is Pentecost would be 50 days from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. So that's when you would begin the count. So it ends up being the 29th day of the fourth month. And we have more about this. So this might be new to you, just wait. We have more explanation. So when counting Sabbath complete, we only count the six working days plus the Sabbath. The Sabbaths here are in tan and the new moon days are in blue. As odd as it sounds, the new moon days are never included in a seven day week. The new moon is never called a Sabbath by name, except for the seventh new moon, Feast of Trumpets. The new moon was a segment of time celebrated in a similar manner as a Sabbath. They blew horns, as it says in Numbers 10, 2 to 3, and 10, Psalms 81, 3. And there was no commerce, Exodus 28 through 11 and Amos 8, 5. The new moon was a day for a set apart convocation, Leviticus 23.3 and Ezekiel 46.1 and 3. So you will notice new moon days were not counted in the week. So, okay. okay. Is Feast of Weeks, Sabaoth. Here's another witness, Exhibit B. Exodus 19.1 places our starting point in the third month Israel arrived at Sinai on the 16th, which is the first day of the week, and Moshe was immediately summoned up the mountain. Yahweh told Moshe, Moshe to go back down the mountain and to tell the people to consecrate themselves, for on the third day of the week, the 18th, he would come down on the mountain in a cloud. That's Exodus 19, 10 through 11. At the set time, Yahweh comes down from Hashemim, and the ten words, the ten commandments, came thundering down the mount. That's Exodus 20, 1 through 17. The people drew back in fear, so Yahweh calls Moshe up and ver verbally gives him the remaining part of the covenant. In Exodus 24, 1 through 3, we find Moshe giving an oral dissertation of what he heard on the mount and the children of Israel agreeing to the terms of the covenant. Moshe then spends that night of the 18th writing down the terms of the covenant. The next morning, the day of the, day of the 19th, Moshe rose and built an altar, altar offering sacrifices and then read the terms of the covenant to the people who once again agreed to the terms, Exodus 24, 4 through 7. After this, Moshe is again called up Mount Sinai, where he stayed 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, notice that in Leviticus 23, we are told to count seven Sabbaths complete, and here we are told to count 40 days and 40 nights. And by counting 40 days and nights, we must count even the new moon days because they are a day. However, when counting Sabbaths complete, we only count the six working days plus one Sabbath day, not the days of the rebuilding of the moon. Now, from the 15th, from, excuse me, from the 19th of the third month, count 40 days you again end up on the 29th of the fourth month. Evidence that this particular day is a feast day. See Exodus 32, 1 through 6. Aaron knew it was a feast day, for it was his job as high priest to proclaim the feast of Yahweh. He just celebrated it the wrong way, and Yahweh was wrought. On this same day, the day Aaron said was a feast unto Yahweh, 
Moshe came down the mountain with the tablets of the covenant. That's Exodus 32, 7 through 20. Not to be lost is the fact that the law was indeed delivered at Feast of Weeks in written form, not orally, on the sixth day of the third month, as Israel did not arrive at Sinai until the 16th day of the third month. At the end of 40 days and 40 nights, Moshe received the tablets of stone. Deuteronomy 9.11 Granted, Moses broke them in a fit of rage, but the law was indeed sent down the mount to the people at Pentecost. Remember Yahweh came upon the mount on the 18th day of the third month, well after the day presently observed as Feast of Weeks, the 6th of Sivan, which is in early June on the Roman calendar. This cannot be overlooked and should not be lightly regarded or ignored. Okay, and then in this calendar again as above where you can look at the, the first month where you have the first Sabbath complete, second, as we said before, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and then the counting of 50 days. So we have two witnesses placing Feast of Weeks on the 29th day of the fourth month on Yah's calendar, which is near the end of July on a Roman calendar. And here is another chart explaining that. The um, seven Sabbath complete and then counting 50 days. <clears throat> so why do we need wheat for Shavuot or Pentecost? Leviticus 23, 15 through 17. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, ye shall number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth fields, Ye shall, uh, they shall be of fine flour, they shall be baked with leaven, they shall be the first fruits unto Yahweh. Okay, so we needed, going back to that screen, we needed the flour um, for those two wave loaves. So can a summer Pentecost be proven by either the historical record or the natural world? <clears throat> Exhibit C, historical record, uh, C, Nehemiah 12, 44. I'm reading over here on the left. Um, there are only three times in the year when Israel was to bring a tithe of first fruits, unleavened bread, feast of weeks, and the feast of harvest or tabernacles. <laughs> which feast time, <clears throat> excuse me, is the wheat, which feast time is the wheat in Nehemiah in reference to Nehemiah 13, 5 and 13, 12? Uh, tells us the new wine and oil was also offered at this time, which is by default the tithe of Feast of Weeks, which is the real count to Pentecost and not the Catholic or the Roman Gregorian calendar count. Uh, because the new wine and oil are summer harvest. Nehemiah 13:15 even records that the sheaves of wheat were being brought in from the fields along with wine and grapes. Nehemiah 12:44, And at that time some, uh, were some appointed over the chambers for the treasure, for the offering, for the first fruits, and for the tithes, to gather unto them out of the fields of the cities the, the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests uh, and for the Levites that waited. Nehemiah 13, 5. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offering, the frankincense, the vessels, and the tithes of corn, new wine, and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the offerings of the priests. Nehemiah 13, 12. Then brought all Judah the tithes of corn, that means the 
crop of the year, or the crop, the, the main crop, and the new wine, and the oil under the treasuries. Nehemiah 13, 15, in those days I saw in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in the sheaves, and laden, ladening asses, as also wine, uh, wine grapes and figs. So, Exhibit D. In Joel 2, 15 through 19 and 2, 24, uh, he speaks of a time when wheat is still on the threshing floor while new wine and new oil are in the vats. See also Haggai 1, 10 through 11, Numbers 18, 11 through 12. Early June, the 6th of Sivan, is still the spring of the year. The grapes and olives are summer crops, not spring. This is an issue that feast keepers uh, and uh, other folks who are against the creation calendar must resolve. Exhibit E, the natural world, it takes wheat more than 50 days to reach maturity. Now there are some who say that wheat spoken of for the Feast of Weeks is sown in the fall along with the barley and matures a few weeks after the barley is harvested. And yes, this would permit a wheat harvest on or about the sixth day of the third month. The problem with this theology is that there are too many witnesses placing the wheat harvest late in the fourth month. This is the type, this is the type of contraction that sets, contradiction that sets Bereans searching for answers the answers are found in both scripture and the natural world. Okay, so we're going to find it in two uh, ways. Uh, nature is one of them. There's two types of wheat, uh, winter wheat and spring wheat. And the compelling fact that there are two types of wheat, winter wheat is planted in late fall and takes seven months to mature and that's about early June. Spring wheat would be planted in the spring, which takes four months to mature. So please remember this. Uh, which one, which one, okay, was planted in Exodus 9 and is referred to for Feast of Weeks? We agree that maybe both types of wheat are now planted in the Middle East, but this doesn't answer the question part, the second part of the question above. There's two types of wheat, okay? And then this picture shows spring wheat and winter wheat. Winter wheat would be planted in autumn on the left and spring wheat would be planted in the spring on the right. So um, the timing of the harvest is important. It is a summer wheat harvest and not the spring harvest. A special offering is brought and two loaves of bread of the new crop of wheat. Let's examine Exodus 9, 18 through 35, and the plague of hail that destroyed Egypt. In verses 31, 32, we find our answer. The flax was ready to harvest and the barley was near ready. Both crops were a total loss. When sown, winter wheat very quickly sends up four to six inch blade of grass, which winters over. Then as the days get longer and warmer, it begins to mature. The wheat is not just, was not destroyed in the plague of hail because it was not grown up. The Hebrew for this phrase means hidden or in the dark. By calculating the time between the plagues, the hail fell on, on or about the 10th day of Aviv. The significance of this is that the wheat in question had just been sown a short time before, before the plague, and had not yet germinated. It was hidden in the dark, buried in the earth. This phrase... Oh my gosh, you guys, I just got a revelation. And hidden in the dark. In Barbara's hidden in the dark. The wheat was hidden at the time of the plagues. And I've told you that this, this day is hidden. 
the moon is new moon and it's a hidden moon. So that's a revelation that just came to me during this very excellent presentation by Sister Barbara and Brother Peter, um, which brings another witness to, to what I have been teaching you guys for three years. Only they've done an excellent job with the graphics and with the scriptures that they put together, proving this point that wheat is, is harvested in the summer, both kinds, not just spring wheat, but also the winter wheat. That's why you have a harvest that takes all summer long. And it starts at Shavuot time, the beginning of the summer, going all the way through to Sukkot time. By the time we are doing trumpets and Sukkot, around trumpets time, running up to um, uh, Yom Kippur, um, we are wrapping up the, the harvest worldwide. And by the time Sukkot is here, we are celebrating uh, a feast that it comes at the end of the harvest season. So we're basically celebrating the whole harvest year, both barley and the wheat. It, the, the cycle is complete, and it's repeated after that. It's repeated. So excellent so far. He's hidden in the dark does not mean that the wheat grass was dark green, not ready for harvest and somehow survive the hail. Scripture does not permit this understanding. At the time of the barley harvest, winter wheat would already be sending up stalks. Said another way, it would be very much above the ground. If in doubt, notice that, quote, every herb of the field, end quote, was also smitten. That's Exodus 9, 22 through 25. Strong's Concordance, Hebrew, 5212 says that the word herb means to glisten or to be green grass or any tender shoot grass herb let's see uh, grass herb if the winter wheat had not yet sent up a stalk it was certainly in grass excuse me i'm sorry um if the winter wheat had not yet sent up a stalk it was certainly in grass form and therefore would not have been destroyed by the hail. Would have been destroyed by the hail. The Torah says that the wheat was not destroyed. So what wheat was used for the Feast of Weeks? Regardless of what type is traditionally held, this wheat was indisputably spring wheat. But don't take our word for it. Um, Judges 15, 1 through 5 says that Samson not only destroyed the wheat, but the vineyards and olives as well. Uh, feast keepers say that this took place at Feast of Weeks. There are no feasts, there are no grapes or olives in early June, the third month on Yah's calendar. So Acts 2, 1, and 13 says that the disciples were accused of being drunk with new wine after Pentecost was fully come. These men knew that there was new wine available. Otherwise, there would be no basis for this claim. Peter doesn't correct their agricultural assessment, but simply says that they were not drunk as supposed. There was no new wine in early June since the grapes were over a month from being ready to harvest but there is new wine at the real Pentecost at the time of summer harvest when the grapes are ripe. And here are some quotes from Philo. In fact, Fenton agrees with Philo, an Israelite man who lived 2000 years ago in the time of Christ. The solemn, quote, the solemn assembly on the occasion of the festival of the sheaf, having such great privileges is the prelude to another festival of still greater importance. For from this day, the 15th day is reckoned, making up the sacred number of seven sevens with the addition of a unit as a seal to the whole. And that's from the works of Philo. You can look that reference up. Okay, and that's the 50th day would be reckoned there. So um, this sounds as if Pentecost is 50 days after wave sheaf, doesn't it? So uh, let's let Philo finish. 
these men, excuse me, uh, these men assemble at the end of seven weeks, venerating not only the simple week of seven days, but also its multiple power, for they know it to be pure and always virgin, and it is a prelude and a kind of forefeast of the greatest feast, which is assigned to the number 50, the most holy and natural of numbers. Again, from works of Philo. So the great, or wave chief, greater and greatest is the great feast spoken of. And from this passage, it is clear that at the end of seven weeks, there was a greater feast, but the greatest was yet to come, the one assigned to the number 50. Remember that 50-day count? And so does Philo see Pentecost being 50 days from wave sheep or 50 days from the end of the greater feast at the end of the seven week count. So please examine this evidence for yourself. Well, Philo and Fenton agree with nature. They agree with Leviticus 23 and the Sinai count in Exodus 32. The 29th day of the fourth month is Shavuot. And Pentecost is the summer feast. It is between the spring feast and the fall feast. It is the middle feast. So uh, surely our fathers have inherited lies. We've all been taught wrongly on a, a papal Gregorian calendar. That's where uh, Christians have placed a Pentecost but we have discovered it is on the Father's lunar solar calendar. So to access more information about the feast days and Pentecost or Passover or anything about the Sabbath or the creation calendar, please go to our website, lunarsabbathday.com. So thank you for being here with us and please like if this is a blessing to you and please share it with your friends that love Yeshua.